Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac's son, his son. And he took his hand and the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. When they came to the place which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear, fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. If his own will be brought us forth by the word of truth, that we shall be kind, a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise in preparation for the Holy Gospel and joining in with the verse. are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is recorded for us in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark. We begin reading at the ninth verse. 
In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our Christian faith before God and one another in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in the all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made a man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. May be seated. Our service hymn and the hymn that I would like to speak with you today is In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Grace, peace, and God's mercy be to each of us through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. September the 11th. 
a date that we recognize and a date that is filled fill our it fills our minds with images what are the various images that you have of 911 and that fateful year uh, when the trade towers came coming came, came uh, were destroyed came down our, our, uh, it's a, v- a variety of images that we have there's one image that sticks in my head and that is in the rubble of the destruction as the towers came down some beams stood among the rubble in the form of a cross. That image is emblazoned in my own memory, particularly of that particular day, is despite all that has happened, despite that all is going on, the cross of Christ stands forever. In his letter to the church of Galatia, St. Paul makes a significant statement. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I and unto the world. It is through these words that the writer of the Lenten hymn that we just sang has borrowed his first line in the cross of Christ. I glory. Like St. Paul, Sir John Bowring was a man of eminent attainments. He was known as a linguist, he was known as a biographer, a historian, and also a poet. It is said that he could speak fluently 22 languages and that he was thoroughly familiar with many more languages. He served in, in a consular uh, appointment. He served at seven different capitals throughout the world. Twice elected to the British Parliament. He became minister to, uh, to China, and he was also governor of Hong Kong. In all his crowded years, the pen of this tireless and successful man was busy writing essays and wi- on widely different subjects, furnishing translations that were proved invaluable for other nations from 20 different languages and composing again also hymns and poems. Noted in this beauty, he finds words, we find writing in other, his writing of of hymns in other words, in, in other hymns. God is love, his mercy brightens. You and I are also probably familiar with another one that he wrote, Watchmen tell us of the night. This also, these also came from his pen. But the opening words of the hymn in the cross of Christ of glory are cut in bold letters upon his tombstone, which bears the date of his death in 1872. Now, the direction for the inspiration of writing this hymn came to Sir John Bowring. We are told in the position where he served as the British consul to Hong Kong. It was on a visit to Macau on the east coast, of, on the coast of South China. He came across the ruins of a great cathedral that had been built actually by Vasco da Gama. In the crest of a great hill with a splendid approach were stone steps that were erected to a great cathedral. However, due to a violent typhoon, the cathedral had fallen. And what was remaining was only the front wall of the cathedral. The front wall made of stone, and on top of it was a bronze cross. Very top that towered to the skies. This image much like that of I have a 9-11, is the image that also inspired Sir Bowing to write, In the cross of Christ I glory, towering over the wrecks of time. All the light, 
of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. The mighty cross that surmounts the ruins and reaches out, as it were, to the very blue, to the very utmost heights of heavens is a picture of the power of the cross for you and for me. The glory of this world, my friends, passes away being little more than a handful of dust that is tossed to and fro by winds and by storms of all of our times. But the one thing that stands and that will continue to stand is the cross, that it holds its place. It maintains its supremacy in the hearts and the minds of millions. Sacred, sacred to all Christians because it typifies the self-sacrificing love of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is here that we begin to recognize the glory of the cross for you and for me. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in, and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart. There your heart will be also. For no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. My friends, what we have before us during these, this, these Sundays in Lent is the cross which comes to full focus, focus for you and for me in all the things that we have and all the things that we day, do. How do we treat the image of the cross? And more specifically, how do we treat the message of the cross in our hearts, in our lives? in our words, and in our actions. The cross is that which will remain. The cross will withstand all of time, even our own lifetime. For it has gone on from the time before us, and it has been passed on from generation to generation. And that very much so is why many, and if not all, of you or I are here today. The message of the cross is sublime in the message of Christ the crucified. For may I never boast except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and thus I to the world. The cross of Christ is for what Christ came to suffer and to die. The cross of Christ is that which gives to you and me the redemption the forgiveness of our sins, which we so earnestly need. The cross of Christ comes with suffering, comes with suffering. It is not one which is a glory theology, but it comes with much suffering. It is here that Christ suffered and died. He paid the price and the penalty for our sins upon it so that you and I might be redeemed, so that we might be receive the righteousness of God so that we might be called the children of God. This is the story of the cross. This is the message of Lent for you and for me. But understand that even our cross is not one which is glory. Our cross is not one which comes just because we are Christians, the world is dismissed or the things that happen to this world are dismissed. Our cross also comes to us in the way of suffering, in 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 the areas that we have around us. We see the suffering of the cross among us because the suffering of the cross is the result of sin, not particularly a sin, but the sin, the corruption of this world in which we live in. And it shows its effect in many ways upon nature or perhaps maybe upon our bodies or our illnesses 
or perhaps maybe it even shows its reflection through or because of our sin and our sin too. It is not a glory ride. It is one that comes by way of suffering in which you and I also then must deny ourselves and be crucified with Christ in order that we too might be raised to newness of life. Even as Christ was raised from the dead, so also we shall receive new life, even amidst the rubble of 9-11, even in the midst of corruption that we have within this world, even in the perhaps the illness or the sickness in which we have. God grants to you and to me a, ra- a, ra- a raising again, a resurrection, a newness of life, and assures us that all things work for the good of those who do trust in him. What is it then that shall separate us from the love of God? Shall it be death? Shall it be famine? Shall it be sickness? Shall it be the results of sins from others, or the result of our own sin. No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through whom, through him who has loved us and gave his only begotten son, that we should not perish, but that we shall be raised to the newness of life. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering throughout the wreck of time, whether it be bane, whether it be through curse, or whether it be by blessing, or whether it it is in pain, or whether it is in pleasure, the cross is that which sanctifies us. The cross of Christ is that which makes us holy. The cross of Christ is that which strengthens us in our lifelong pursuit and will be our reward when we, when we receive heaven. It offers to you and to me the peace that knows no measure, the joys through all times abide. Amen. The peace that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in this true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. Dearest Jesus, it is indeed holy ground upon which we in spirit stand to view your cross. For there you endured God's wrath and justice against our sins, suffering and dying for us. We thank you that when you appeared in your first advent to this wicked world, you came not as judge to condemn us, but as a savior to save us. In our dying hour, nothing can comfort us but the blood that you shed on our behalf. While we live, there is no treasure that we can desire to equal the treasure of salvation that you won for us and now offer us in your word. Nothing we achieve in this world can begin to compare with the redemption that you have accomplished for us. There are no earthly relationships which can mean as much to us as having you as our friend and as our Savior. We praise you, O precious Redeemer. And now, O Holy Spirit, light divine, enter our hearts with your blessings and abide there. Take away any trust that we may have in our own righteousness and lead us always to make sincere confession of our sins and unworthiness. Fill us with a steadfast faith continually to trust all that Christ has done for our salvation. And when he comes to judge the world, may he count us as God's children and heirs of eternal life. In this Lenten tide, may our Savior in his sacrifice on the cross occupy our thoughts so that through solemn meditation our faith may be greatly strengthened and we may acquire a new sense of devotion to our Christian duties. Help us to live Christ. Help us to confess his holy name. Help us to abide by his word. Help us to follow wherever he leads. And help us to bear our own crosses crosses patiently. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
gracious Father, from whom every fatherhood under heaven is named, support and bless every Christian home, that husbands and wives may be devoted to one another, and parents would pass on the faith of faith to their children by word and by deed. Almighty Father, you have established all authority on earth. Therefore, bless those entrusted with these, this responsibility, both here and also throughout the world, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, those who are hospitalized, or are enduring ongoing treatment. We especially, O Lord, come before you and ask for your peace, ask for your strength, ask for your hand of healing for Jackie DeBeau, for Barb Fuhr, for Donna Huber, for Ula Nystrom, for Kathy Ongpen, for Wanda Rosenswig, for Dorothy Boer, for Jane Bossy, for Paul Graver, for Kathleen Keller, for Lisa Shaw, and also for uh, Judy Brown. Watch over them, Lord, and grant them your uplifting power as they hold close to their hearts the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it strengthen them in their time of need. O Lord, grant us your peace and receive healing, relief according to your gracious will. Be with those who are lonely. Be with those who are depressed or mentally ill. Surround them with those who know that your redeeming love and your will mercifully care for them. Grant steadfastness to those who are near death. Comfort those who grieve, and especially be with the family of Donna Zimmer. Be the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to all of your children. Lord, hear us together in your precious name. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. God's blessings and may the Lord be with you through this week. Thank you.